losing streak. It does certainly paint the picture of what to look forward to as we step into Vertigo. Fnatic on the defense. It will be Mad Lions to attack. GG.bet has actually given the edge to Mad Lions. Wow. That's a testament to how far Fnatic have fallen from grace. Okay, well, let's get this one underway here. The buys are in for both sides. You've got Acor, the man we were just talking to with a bunch of utility, and the same for Refresh. Molotov flashes and smokes to work with. Molotov towards mid for crowd control, and fast on to B they go. Flash is already dinked. Brawlin. Oh, they don't check him, and he manages to punish three. Four from Brawlin. Just out of nowhere with a USP. Not even the weapon for the job. That is a quick announcement of the Brawlin's presence. And JW's here to finish off the piece. to steal the ace, perhaps not. Doesn't yeah. catch a glimpse. Refresh. He saw the barrel. He just wasn't focused. He definitely saw the barrel there. And so Refresh sits. He has to make a sound cue. Ooh. Soft death dismount. JW will hunt. He finishes off the job. So Brawlin. A USP, no less. How does he convert I that? I have no I, I, I expect one. Two is like he's pushing it. Four. One. Flying through the air. Who's this? Shush had a nightmare there. Yeah, they've all got Shush bounding, but nightmare. that's one to forget quite quickly, I think, as uh, that's going to put a lot of confidence and a smile on the face of the babyface killer Brolin there. He is one, if he gets activated, a massive win condition for Fnatic here. He packs a punch alongside of Crims, and that is one way to kick off the affair here against the Mad Lions. Just going to be the economical coming out. Is. Armored P2K, boys. How many is he going to get against the Glocks? I swear, if he gets more than one with an armored P2K, I'm going to scream. Brolin's here. Ah, that's going to make things even more difficult. They're uh, walking on the back wall there, so the feet can't be spotted by Brolin's little jiggle here. There's the P2K and the crossfire. Oh, wait, hold up. Flush is going for an ace with the P2K. He got four with the P2K. No armor, no problem. But the lucky P2K was equipped by Hoops. He doesn't know the secrets, though. <laughs> he doesn't know the secrets. Oh, dear. Okay, well, it's... Flush, been... Dude, two 4Ks to kick off the game. Yeah, and I, and I want to <laughs> see it from Flush's POV. Here it comes. No need for a weapon. I'll keep my default pistol. And he gets not only two, but four oh my with the P2K. All Brolin was was a glorified $4,000 distraction. Jeez, he even copped a dink there, poor Brolin in the mix. So we're getting the gun rounds underway very quickly. Mad Lions with the full eco straight into the AKs. They like B, don't they? Yeah, and some flashes through the window. This one's a matchmaking oh! classic. Oh, Fnatic could not have had a dreamier start to Vertigo. Uh, hello. Thank you. Slippery sandbags. Those pesky, pesky sandbags. This is nuts. Look at the damage. This round is over. Roy and Acor shaken. Refresh perhaps is a win condition. I mean, maybe. It's a maybe, though. JW's hiding his barrel, and just as he peeks, he's found. I can't think of a better way to get the mojo flowing in the right direction for Fnatic. A quad kill with a P2K, a pistol round 4K, and then just running into the meat grinder. They go for a B take, and just in time, that MP9 comes down from Brolin. This is over, boys. Yeah, clean up crew on aisle B. Two AKs recovered as well. No, three, just in the nick of time. Flusher grabs one. That's great stuff there as Fnatic are up to a 3-0 lead here. Mad Lions are stumped. They're I'm calling it now. I reckon it's going to be a 7-0 Fnatic start. Wow. We finish it. 8-7. Much closer. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I want to make a couple of little notes there. You saw that Brolin finished the previous round, round number two, with an M4. He had the spawn to be up close personal towards B. So the falling or jumping Accuracy with the MP9 is better. They threw that one across to him, swapped some weapons around, and he was able to find a lot of damage, but the pistols are out. It's going to be a partial investment here from Mad Lions as they will be opting for the buy in round number five. But what damage can they do? At this point, we are just looking for some confidence. And while well, JW building some of his own and kill through the smoke, Ooh. Roy falls, and there's Acor. Oh, no, Acor needs to be very careful there. Might slip off if he's not too careful. His movement is good, so what am I worried about? One benefit of me not playing CS in three weeks is I haven't fallen off Vertigo in three weeks. That's I nice. thought you do it in per on purpose, right? Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. A cool point. Uh, Brolin getting a lot of pressure from these Desert Eagles. His mission is to just delay that bomb plant. It has been a bit of a bumpy ride. They have got enough frags to get space and an AK. Bomb won't be planted, though. Incendiary stops it. And JW kind of just putting a bow on this. Unless Refresh was to get a one-tap. Spray works. Two on two. They have oh, a smoke now. as well. Crims might want to use that. Golden, he knows he's got an unarmored adversary close. Refresh low as well. That bomb plant will be Refresh's responsibility, and he goes down default now. Fakes it. Hoping to spur Golden into the peak and losing Acorp. 
Beginning of the end, Fnatic do go up 4-0 and convert. Interesting note for all you Vertigo naysayers out there. They've gone B for all four rounds here to kick off map number one of our second series of the day. So the other bomb site actually getting some action. For once. Feels quite nice. And so does Acor getting the AWP. He's actually thrown it across to Shush here. So if we can go on board with Shush Rushley to see what type of pick they're opting for in the early stages here. It does look like over towards B. Oh, scary stuff, that B or peak. It feels like you're at a disadvantage from the get-go, but he takes it nonetheless. So there's no aggression here, but there is from JW. So all up on the other side of the map, looking for space, looking for territory. Roy, brave, like it, just the edge of the flame. Look at all that utility he has to deal with. Smokes, Molotovs, flashes now as well as the AWP. It forces forward. Roy's on his lonesome here. Yeah, but it's a powerful lurk you can set up. No spam, that's good. Hasn't given away his position. And now back over towards B, they hedge. AWP has been thrown back towards Acor. It looks like a bit of a split they're trying to set up. Yeah, oh, if he finds the frag on A, it would have been very convincing. I wonder if that's enough to keep their feet planted, though. Brolin does behead the AWPer. Doesn't need the scope on that orc to do damage. And so already casualties from Ad Lions to Woe become refreshed. Good precision it's after playing anti. Ron's hunting. Strange sound cues being exchanged. He knows he's, there's a hunt on. He's juked in here. Life is valuable. Hooksy, that's a crucial frag. That was the B defender. There's room for Mad Lions here. It's short lived. Celebrations cut short by Crims. Two of them coming in from construction. A boost, I like it. Over the smoke, and it enables them to find Hooksy clean. Shush to clutch. Not easy. Far from it. He needs one, and it's unlikely he gets it cleanly. Two of them on the site already. He's hoping to catch the straggler. It'll be JW. They molly him out of position. That's perfect from Fnatic. And Very again, good stuff. 5-0 start. So they didn't panic there and they didn't rush it. I love the fact that they used the extra elevation from the construction position to get that kill onto Hooksy. And then knowing that the bomb had just gone down, they didn't need to force forward. This was a nice adjustment from Refresh to make the round interesting, but getting caught out of position as that rotation came in. And this is the boost I liked and that Molotov to follow. They were just uh, crossing their T's and dotting their I's. They weren't rushing it as we get some glimpse at the players at home and a bit of frustration within the early stages because they've been kept to a clean sheet right now. It's 5-0 in favor of Fnatic. That plant with the max loss bonus does bode well. But if you want to be supporting your fans, your team, as fans at home, head over to iem.gg slash fan cam. You can see some of people watching at the moment. Join them. Get your flags. Make some signs. Okay. We do see another orb for Acor. I was intrigued to know whether or not he'd be given that. Shush yet to frag. Same as Roy. Roy had a rough one on train the other day alongside of Hooksy. That was against Na'Vi. Be good to see them get off the mark early here. Well, don't worry. My prediction is 7-0, right? Don't okay. forget. Two more rounds as Hooksy's lobbed out one towards scaffolding. That one's going to obscure the vision anybody pushing down the alley. CT's lobbing there. Smokes for crowd control too. And Acor mounting up and over, seeing if he can find anybody at all. And we know that Golden loves to do a little jump peek over towards that sandbag. Having to tuck his head down here. Well, that sound cue lets them know what they're working with, and they've actually opted for a double nade right onto Roy. So 20 HP, and he hasn't even seen anybody yet. Yeah, and I don't fancy Acor's chances against uh, this JW warp peak. It will favor the Swede. Yeah, that's big. Opening frag found. JW draws another opening, and it's added to by Golden. Shush, this is a chance. Flush has worked it out, though. He saw it just in the nick of time, but B, again, the finish for Mad Lions, and that was the frag they needed. Fnatic are looking very well drilled here. There is very few avenues that the Mad Lions have tried to walk that haven't been met by just brutality. Brolin, this was where he got his pistol 4K. He's tucked in again on the weapon round. It's just a, a foreboding feeling for refresh. I think a timeout's needed for Mad Lions once this one comes to its likely conclusion. Maybe they do the Tech 9 armor, then call the timeout. Yeah, it's just I think they need to slow down the pace of the game. It's because of how quickly these rounds have run away. It doesn't even feel like you're getting a chance to compete. You can see Refresh is trying to slow it down for himself and isolate some jewels, but he won't even get that option as Brolin finishes him off. And what I mean by that is like if, if the rounds aren't playing out in like 3v3s and you're not getting too much of a chance to play in, you're just getting obliterated. And that can truly be said for Shush and Roy. It was... Uh, that retake we were 
been talking about before. Control there, you can see the headshot coming in from Flusher. Controls the spray beautifully. You can see Golden, he's, he talks with his hands. He's a gesticulator, is Golden. You know what's quite interesting here? I'm sure that a lot of prep work was done by Fnatic for Vertigo when they were going up against Complexity because I think that they got That's lured fair, into that yeah. Inferno pick uh, when they were probably expecting Vertigo to be the choice. Ooksy, you've got something for us. Now you smoke. Yeah, does he need to break the glass or is that all part of it? I think it's already broken, so he's going to be lucky here with a little bit of a crouch move and a oh, throw. And that is gross. Look at that deep mid elevator smoke for the mid push. That's filthy. Very groovy. And you can see what it's done. It gives them control. They have CT spawn. Suddenly, A's getting flanked, and Shush has got another. He might even get another dink golden, unfortunately, through the frame. Oh, they're standing next to each other. AW is going to find him with a no-scope refresh. Wait, kissing they were in the smoke. And another through the smoke. Acor exposed by the jump. This one, it looked cool. It looked very cool, but it has not manifested into anything particularly productive. And so the seven for Fnatic will be secured. Perhaps that timeout and an eight seven comeback, Chad, could be on the car. <laughs> <laughs> that was some nerd burger stuff right there from yep. the Mad Lions. But that little foray over there towards elevator room, I think that refresh was stuck between two players. Because there was a rifler in front of him and JW was behind with the AWP. That was really quite odd right there. But there is the 7 and 0 is the Oracle, Alex Machine Richard. Here it is. Look at this, Alex. Yeah, you're right. What there is was this? A proper Eiffel Tower <laughs> setup. <laughs> oh wow! Refresh didn't stand a chance. I haven't heard that one since my college days either. So um, <laughs> seven to zero. Now it's time for a bit of a catching of the breath. I, I imagine this is a timeout called. Looks like yeah, timeouts remaining. Three. It is Mad Lions using one of their timeouts as foretold. All right, all right. There is no spoon, Chad. That's how I've worked this out. There is no spoon. Yeah, I can oh. see into the matrix now. It's just ones and zeros. Ah. But the kill spread is very demoralizing. In fact, 12 kills to Brawl, and that's more than the entirety of Mad Lions combined. Huge discrepancy in independent firepower to start off this map pick. Back-to-back -back timeouts as well. You're right. Two in a row. Now, I was wrong last time I mentioned this. You can take as many in a row as you want. If you want to burn all four and have your two minutes, go nuts. And you might need to. Look at Brolin's ADR. 201 points of damage per round. That's average damage around for those of you not too familiar with our acronyms. I'll lack your name in a minute. That was innuendo. Ah. I'm actually... Um, oh, I, I don't know where to take that. We'll just <laughs> leave it. There were was, was so many places <laughs> yeah. I was going to go. But you didn't, and I respect it. I'm taking a quick look at the advanced stats, double-checking how that multi-kill has been distributed. He's got three multi-kills so far, has Brolin, just seven rounds into the piece, and a double oh, timeout. Off. Yeah, and a cancel after. Okay. So there's been a huge delay. I wonder if Mad Lions are trying to take the wind out of Fnatic sales here. Yeah, hopefully a tech issue we can get resolved very quickly. Didn't look like there were too many issues. Obviously, these situations tend to be just team speak, or maybe someone just spilt water all over their mouse pad. I always find it interesting when they, yeah, the, the buy can be changed. I think they have to buy back in. Identically. Yeah, I, I believe that the rules mean that they, like, at, le at least, like, if you accidentally bought, like, a Negev, right, you're going to have to buy that Negev again. But I let's see. say that you, you bought, like... Two flashes and you want to smoke. Yeah, I'm sure that there's, there's probably no dramas on that kind of a, a change-up. But one of the dramas Mad Lions have, lack of AWP. Now, this could spell a pace change from Mad Lions, something that could be a bit quicker, a bit more pack-heavy, because you've got Acor on a rifle and not an AWP. went for a 4A lean to start this off. Okay. And it's just going to be a very passive hold on towards B and middle. Brolin just poking for info. Flush of the same on B. Three towards A. Oh, Brolin. Goody, look at he it. gets his nade right. Oh, I'm intrigued to know how much damage it will do. It's about timing. That's the flash. And, oh, Hooksy gobbles it up. Practically full damage. They smoke off elevators. This is, again, the mid-presence. Brolin's got the angle he's comfortable with, and it does look promising. Hard to clear. Very hard to clear. And he still finds Acor. Hooksy as well. Very well played by the babyface killer. Double. Flush is doing what Flush does best on B, just being a nuisance as they try and punish. Come on, Roy. Get one, mate. Zero, one, oh. eight. It's not the place you want to be, especially as one of the more supportive elements of the team. And that's what Roy is. Look, he's not meant to be a star fragger by any means, but he's definitely not meant to be sitting there at zero frags to his name. 
And to be fair, well, his teammates are keeping very honest as well. Not too many kills distributed whatsoever. And look at the smile on JW. Just a little grin. Things are going very swimmingly. There's no need to get upset. There's no need to get frustrated. Everything's going well. And on the other side, well, Hooksy, the in-game leader. He might need to come out with something fast and furious on the P90. The bullets, the spam that's downrange, the dink's even into flusher, and he's found the kill eventually. That's how you win. Oh, that's awkward. Just fortunately fixes the issue before it gets too out of hand. It's a long distant angle held by JW, but it's unlikely the Mad Lions are going to give him anything for free. Oh, Acor does get caught in the fingernails. Now they clutch on. Frags pulled forward. Just crims. He's there found we go. And that's what they needed. Finally break their silence. Mad Lions finishing it off. And it all starts with a P90 charging. They'll have to drop some weapons. When in doubt, rush B. I think uh, that's basically been in Counter-Strike folklore since the dawn of time. And Shush there getting some impact, really dealing with that rotation. You can see how tight the choke point gets towards CT spawn and that construction position with just the light utility being dropped. And the guns will be back out. The bank balance for Fnatic was looking phenomenal, so they have no dramas with buys in the next as well. As now it's just a pace change. Maybe they want to go for more of a default play, but lots of harassment early with this utility and Crim's up close and personal. He could be a nightmare. Oh, he's going to feel the nightmares of Hooksy, but Golden with oh, a wow. double through the smoke. Oh. A triple from Golden. Roy. Mad as hell, the round's done. JW makes sure of that, puts a nail into Hooksy. Go on, Shush. Nope, nothing. That's going to be just the two of them. JW and Golden partnering up for all five kills necessary to pull home the ninth Fnatic. I think I like the angle you took there, Chad, because I remember that Fnatic uh, complexity series and with the veto surprising us, Vertigo not showing up in the bands. Yeah. Something they would have worked on, right? Because they yeah. knew that Complexity were their opening team for about a week, I think, since it was drawn. So and then Complexity beat Fnatic on their own map pick. Are they singing a national anthem of some variety? There was hands on chests. I, I saw a bit of singing into the microphone there. So interesting. Loving the fans getting activated as smokes back towards the ramp. Buy again. And this time Roy finds an entry. He's been having a rough time of it. That's his second kill. Oh, look at this. This is naughty by Roy. Well, this is naughty by Flusher. There's, I think there's a good shot here for Hooksy. Ooh, okay. So Bronner's tucked in and Flusher continues his push. Ah, oh, that's Acor's responsibility. And well, he confirms it at least. Lock him in. Good frag that bails them out, but what cost? They don't get the extinguish fast enough. Hooksy's working on a very nice flank. JW's gonna get completely caught out. He saves refresh his life. And now the round is Mad Lions to control. They'll be taking the bomb B. Golden's miles away. And just, I mean, the fact that Acor even survives enables him to be getting this bomb down and recover that Galil. So by the smallest of margins, it could very well be two in a row. Golden living that no glove, no knife skin lifestyle. He's here for the W. Why do I sound Australian when I say some things now? You've ruined me. Sorry, mate. Oh, ouch. All right, well, Golden, I've got a feeling you might have a chance in this. You can see already hunting towards spawn. They've left the bomb completely open. Acor, he's not even thinking about on, going Golden. back to the site. Golden oh, no. is just here for damage. He's seeing nobody home. If he runs in now and starts defusing, there might be a chance. Golden, are you going to get this defuse if he gets on it? Oh, okay, a little bit too late there. As you can see, just not enough time required for the defuse. But <laughs> dropping a body and making sure that a weapon will have to be reinvested in, not the worst way, but Fnatic, nine rounds to the good. Uh, I have a ninja fuse itch that hasn't been scratched in some time. It would have been nice. I just, I want one of them. I saw I saw a couple of crazy attempts. I think in that big game, Tabson went for some crazy 1v3 from Coffins, but... Um... Yeah, I haven't personally got to uh, witness a cheeky ninja in very long time. Love to see it lining up. You can see that this one's a bit more convoluted than it needs to be. There's your ram smoke. And you can see the exchange. The T's throwing their own so as to enable the full cross and not giving the CTs the gaps that they're hoping to create with their own. Yeah, you can see there on Roy's POV that he can kind of use the smoke as a little bit of a one-way for the crane peak as well as fighting anybody who wants to force over towards the scaffolding position. So a good way to fight fire with fire or smoke with smoke. As Mad Lions go back towards middle, a bit of an affinity for this area of the map. It, it's helped with their rotations. It's really split Fnatic down the middle, as it would. 
That's the dumbest thing I think I've said. Yeah. Anyway. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> That's Golden finding himself ahead of Refresh, and there's just chaos. He's fine. Nearly transferred into Acor. Flusher, however, seems to have this worked out. Roy anticipating the flank through the smoke, and now a three on three. Here we go. Mad Lion starting to make a half out of this. Molotov. Landing, forcing Roy a little further back. He can still hold the line, though. Biding their time. This is the push. Smoke on Crims. BW still sees nothing. Finally, Shush draws blood. And now, Fnatic running out of chances, running out of players. JW just looks to get out. And it will be Mad Lions continuing to close that gap just a little bit more. They've won themselves three of the last four rounds of play. Oof. All right, well, I'm not sure if Fnatic can really afford to allow Mad Lions to warm back into this game. Now, I know it's still early stages. We are still just have 12 rounds to play. But if this is a 9-6 half, Mad Lions will have had to have woken up individually and they'll take the momentum and confidence into the second half. Those are very, very positive things for a young Sprightly squad to be working with and knowing they're going up against another Tier 1 opponent after their match against Na'Vi just the other day. They're going to be feeling good about things. As you can see, Peacemaker, the coach we highlighted at the start of the show, I mentioned he's an early adopter, been doing this since 2015. Not too many coaches can boast that kind of a resume within CSGO. You can see a timeout will be called from Fnatic here. Need to discuss their options. Brolin still sitting at the top of the charts there with 16. Crims yet to get fully activated. Haven't needed a lot from him up until this stage, and there hasn't been a lot of play over towards A just yet. But going into... Round number 13, he'll just be down to a Deagle. We've got M4s for Golden and Flusher. Brolin with that Org and an AWP in the hands of JW. But the money will be broken after this one. And Man Lions could look to net up a 9-6 half. Hooksy, some more uh, variants in his purchases right now. Has a MAC-10. We've seen him make it work with the P90. That's a missed shot, but it, more of a warning than anything else. There will be more where that came from. Roy's been trying his luck on this push. Time after time, and Golden knows it. Nate doesn't find anything, though. Molly will descend upon Crims. He's dropped himself a smoke, and actually sticking around. You'd think with a sound cue, you'd be a bit scared, but he's happy to just continue to apply the pressure. Ooh. Good chance, Jiggle, from Flusher. He actually wants to re-aggress, and that was the end of Flusher's chapter. And there's more where that came from for Mad Lions. B is always the finish. It's working out again. Tight line, JW burning down to 16. He really didn't like that. They might have to save on this one here. If they go for this and they lose, they're going to have no money to work with. But Roy's already working on the chase oh. and Golden. That's disaster. Yeah, well, that's a perfect finish. Mad Lions are doing great work. Closing stages of this one. Crims recovers an M4. He'll be happy to hold on to that if he holds on to that. Hunted now by Roy from... T spawn and Raycorn's lockdown construction. So we got one for Crims in his pursuit for save, but Roy had the sound cue pre aimed nicely and J dubs preserving the AWP as far away as he could possibly be. Okay, well, three, two, one. Jesus, oh. JW's gone down. He's lost the AWP. Hooksy has found him in the final seconds. He chose to ignore it, hide, try to hide the barrel, but it was enough push from Hooksy. Knife out in the last couple of seconds. Massive find. This was the frag onto Flusher. Boom. B side open. Move. Get moving. And then he gets the second to confirm it. This is so close. Look at this Jumps. jumping around the corner. Pre fires. Did he get shot by his teammate there as he jumped around the corner? I'm not quite sure what happened, but either way, JW lost the AWP, and that means there's an eco from Fnatic. They've upgraded into some pistols, but there's not too much utility to work with. So Mad Lions, they have a chance to get their fifth. And they will find the first of this 14th round. JW patrolling and pushing Scaff, trying to take some space early. Cost him, cost him greatly. In fact, that was the only Deagle. Everything else a bit weaker. Oh, this is a cheeky position here by Brolin. You can see tucked in towards the sandbag. If they harass him with utility, a Molotov would be perfect. It becomes less potent, but if he gets baited for by Crims and then whoop, up comes Brolin's head, maybe we can have a couple of frags, but that's if mid is the finish. Looks right now they want to clear off towards B and Shush has to be aware of Flush's position. Shadow's good. Frag is better. Flush's corpse thrown off the top floor.
We're going down, down in an earlier round. Sugar, we're going down. Imagine if you're in an office building, you just look it out oh. there, and there's a CT just oh. flying oh. out the window. There he goes. Poor landing. Landed on his side. Needed to see the straight legs. Boy, he's got a nice little shooting gallery. Everyone gets 300 bucks. You get 300. You get 300. <laughs> That's really good for Acor's confidence there. He doesn't have a lot of kills up until this point, and nobody really on the squad does, but him getting a couple of freebies on the Eco. We need here to see him come alive on the AWP on the CT side. And now that they've actually given themselves a, a couple of rounds to work with, yeah, look, no rotations, yeah. not even an attempt. Poor form, really poor form. Like he's Russia. got three more dives here this evening, so... Uh, Belly first. It's, uh, it's the belly flop. That's a zero. Big goose egg from the judges on his not form. Happy with that one. All right. Final round, first half, second map. Aiko has an AWP. I think I've only said that one other round. Second series. He's worked for them in the past. Oof. It's only through the pressure they apply to A, though, that that works. You can see that Flusher has got support from Brolin here. Oh. Been a couple of flubs like that tonight with simple jumps. The overpass game with Mira and Magix uh, definitely sticks out to me, but that sound cue is not enough to deter Mad Lions. The entirety of this game, they have finished towards B or through middle, and now, finally, they are leaning towards A. That has forced Fnatic to play two players respecting these B hits time and time again, but Golden could play spoiler. Wow. Good. <laughs> okay. He's dropped his smoke, and now you've got a bit of a weird one. It was thrown by his teammate. So the question is, is there actually anyone there? Well, they have one HE on Roy to throw at his position. That's not going to be enough damage. And if he re-smokes, that's going to stifle their push. So do you forget about Golden and just go through short? You might have to. Yeah, he's definitely there. Let's see how his nade gets lined up. Go on. Not far off. It could have done a significant amount more. Had it had a little bit more oomph, a bit more top spin. He's going to flash over in front of Golden Sandbags for the peak. And yeah, hoping they assume he's crossed back. Oh, confirms he's still there for 15 seconds. Dude, dude, he's rot the clock so much. And now he comes out to peak. Can they get the bomb down? Hooksy unloads his mag. Brolin trying to create chaos, and he has. With one frag, he's won the round. No time for Roy. Flusher wins by not moving a muscle, and it's 10-5. Mad Lions. They started incredibly slow, but they do manage to keep it, at least a lid on it. Double digits for Fnatic coming into half two.
I'm so sorry that I wasn't really there for me. So our second series features both Mad Lions and Fnatic. Inferno is our second, but we start our battle on Vertigo. This is Mad Lions' pick. And Peacemaker giving them the last final pep talk before they step into the realms again. Now, Vertigo typically T-sided, Chad. This is Fnatic coming in with a 10-round CT side. Admittedly, it's not a map that they have a particular affinity for, but one can only say that this is only going to point further towards a Fnatic Inferno win, a uh, Vertigo win. Yeah, and I think here that uh, they definitely should be going into the second half with a lot of confidence. They get two cracks here. They lose pistol rounds. They might even just go for the force by get two cracks to break that CT-sided economy, whereas I think for Mad Lions, they need this pistol and they need to convert. But look at all the utility they've bought. Meanwhile, Fnatic are just rushing middle. They might not get a chance to use these nades. Go on, refresh. Oh my Very god! vulnerable, and that was just a nuclear airstrike arriving in middle. Oh god, it's over before it even begins. Mad Lions, shut that down. Those grenades, I didn't even see where they came from. One from, from. B, I think. There was three in play there, and I thought that was going to be used for post-plant to stop or deny plants you on see either where they, side. Okay, so Roy's got one. One already out. Boom, and there's the second deeper. Yeah, you can see how much damage that did, and it made short work. Look, four people can contest mid now. I That's think, how quick they reacted. I think the third nade actually missed. If the third nade got there, these guys might have been bowled on down. It might have been a strike. We saw OG out from Mad bringing Lions. nades into the CT pistol, and now we've seen Mad Lions. Maybe there's more to it than meets the eye. Okay, so just a quick little note here for everybody. Seeing Fnatic go for a full eco, they're one of the only teams who do this on a consistent basis on their T side. If they don't get the plant, they go for the full save, and that will facilitate them getting the buy in the third round of the second half. Yeah. If they were able to get the force, they might consider uh, the plant, sorry, they might consider going for a force, drop some guns across, but they're being conservative right now. They want to get those AKs out as soon as possible, and that is why it's extremely important for Mad Lions to keep a clean sheet in this round of play. You don't want to be dropping any guns to the Glocks. Make sure you don't have to reinvest that armor. Make sure you can hold on to all of your weapons. Sure, it's fine to, to drop your utility. That obviously will be a bit of an investment. But the lion's share of the cost will come through with the armor and the weaponry as steps are made towards B. Hasn't actually baited out too many nades. Refresh is going to get tickled on up here. Blood splatter will be noted as Acor finds a frag. He needs to farm some cash with that MP9 to get himself an AWP. And Brolin continuing to be cheeky. As Refresh always. is uh, just swatting away flies, really, at that point. Hooksy's aggression's dropped the bomb, and that's two more for Hooksy. Make it the fourth. Closing things out cleanly, and Mad Lions, to the script they need to follow, have now got themselves seven rounds. Ten to seven. Map number one here, and has the claps from Peacemaker. Do you think that the Swedes are a little bit unhappy that Mad Lions are using their color scheme? The blue and blue and yellow? Blue? Oh, isn't that I the suppose, Swedish flag? Yeah, blue and yellow, the Swedish flag. I'm, I'm onto it. I thought you were thinking, talking about Fnatic in particular. I was like, black and orange isn't too prominent in Mad Lions branding. Okay, guns are out. The utility exchange over towards Ramp, and Roy is going hyper-aggressive. He's going all the way in. The flash is good. Roy's got one. Yeah, and he actually gets away. Nice turn of pace. I can't believe he got away. Yeah. He didn't hang around at all. Just pushed straight down on the back of that molly, forcing them to be retreating. Knew that they might not be so action on. Roy's going for the safest way to get that information. You can see how hard of a shot that is to hit. Ooh, Hooks, he's gone for the opposite approach. Very risky. Overexposed. He does get away, though. 30 HP for Hooks. He won't be taking something so risky again. JW, in the meantime, forging a path in middle. Be a bad one for Fnatic to I lose. Mean, look at Acor's uh, passive stance. You can see he was actually just crouched holding the walk up that ramp. He has managed to slip away. Refresh will see JW shortly. Hello. Yeah, one mid, he says, with conviction. It's four versus five. Oh my god, Refresh. He's brought the fight to JW, but it does mean Mad Lions have to work now at an even keel. Less weapons as well. This is AKs against SMGs and FAMAS. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that a lot, Shush. Very powerful. With 30 seconds left on the clock, doubling down into that tight corner, unlikely to be checked. Could be mollied. They don't have one. Here they come. Shush. 
Needs to deny. Perfect timing on the push. It's great stuff from Acor and Shush, but Acor left alone with a USP precise, though, into the dome. And it's finished off by Roy from behind. Mad Lions defending successfully. All right. Well, uh, that was a fantastic start. And I actually want to highlight that. Check this Molotov from Hooksy here that they throw initially. That denies any aggression up through the smoke, which Crims has liked in the past. You can see Roy getting aggressive. You can see a nade getting barreled on down. And then check this flash. It's going to be perfect. It's just exploded right here, completely blind, completely blind to this side of the screen as well. Pushes in, gets the kill, has the number advantage, and gets on out of dodge. So great work there to kick things off on a bonus round. Very That's cool. what you like to see. Yeah, what's that line up there? I think we've got a wall bang. Coming in from Acor. Damn, lost it for now, but goes for something crazy all the same. Now, just Eagles, bit of HE action. They win this. They are well and truly back in this game, Mad Lions. Just up against these Eagles. The nuclear strike getting lined up for them. Lots of nade work in today's game. Yeah. Utility damage off the charts. There we have it. Just collecting what they needed to. They are just remaining on the hunt for Crims, but that was a 3-2 split of your T's, just two towards B, and ended up in middle, all going down. So Mad Lines have closed the gap. Oh, okay. Interesting note here. Crims has actually bought the Krieg. Uh, he did that the other day on Inferno versus Complexity as well. Uh, didn't go so well for him. We didn't get too much action out of it. But it's interesting to see players, especially at this tier one level of Counter-Strike, bringing it out. A lot of players thought that it had been nerfed to Oblivion. And as Counter-Strike players are, they're very stubborn about trying new things. But Crims has obviously been working on this, seeing if it fits his play style. He's wielding it towards middle. So has the scope. And has a fight. Refresh is coming. The flash is no good. And Crims, he cannot convert. Maybe the fire rate could have actually been a problem there. Yeah, perhaps. Down to 42. Refresh now. A huge amount of pressure applied. Look at this. Flusher and Golden both have to react to the potential of refresh in middle. And he's going down the ladder. The man's crazy. Great spray. Go on, Brawlin. Roy stands and fights and delivers as well. Numbers favoring Mad Lion's defense here. Golden the timing. Stun. That's the bomb. Refresh is right behind enemy lines and he's sewing oh down my God. and destruction. Flusher caught on the rotate. Just J-Dubs. He's not going to gray screen, is it? Oh my God, Jay. Hello. Nice doing? foot. Nice to meet you. That is a huge round from Refresh. They are four massive kills. And I want to say that the other day when we watched them versus Na'Vi, you probably weren't impressed. If you heard me on the desk saying, yeah, Refresh, he's going to fill the space of Bubsky. He's going to be this aggressive rifler. We're going to see a lot from him. He's actually filling what seems to be a bit more of a supportive or passive role, probably better than supportive. Um, but here, right there, that's explosive, that's aggressive, and that's the type of play that I hope we can see more of from this kid because him with Acor, that could be a very potent duo. Now Fnatic, they're getting a little bit stumped. They're going to be getting a little bit frustrated. This is starting the same way that the first half did. Just absolutely blow out Counter-Strike. now into the blender of middle they go again. And all the kills fall in the feed for Mad Lions. They're about to take the lead in this. I can't they believe I'm saying that. Yeah, they certainly are. I mean, let's not forget how this one started. Fnatic get off to a blistering pace. It was seven, if not eight, in a row in that first half. And well, similar scenes for Mad Lions. So... At the moment, a taste of their own medicine. It is once again a full buy. We'll get to see a timeout called, in fact, by Fnatic as they look to try and piece this one back together again. So somewhat of a role reversal. Mad Lions have been here. Poor Humpty Dumpty. Never was put together again. JW's got his backup PCs there. You can see all 12 of them. He changes them like uh, Chad used to lands. change mouse pads. <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever he does lands, you know, they get the friends around. All right, guys, we're going to use my office space. And, uh, get everybody around. But things are looking great now for Mad Lions, and it's good to see them in a bit of a boot camp space as well. We can definitely see Hooksy there, refreshes there. We've seen Peacemaker. There's Shush. Got his gaming glasses on today. Acor was the final man on your screen. I swear when we had the cams on, Roy the other day was at home because he was looking buff and then he changed, right. remember? So I'm not sure if he's with the gang either, but I'm sure we can keep tabs on this as the game continues forward. Round 22 getting underway. No AWP brought out for JW here to fight fire with fire. And Roy, who was on 006 or something along those lines, now has 17 kills. Yeah. So he's really come alive here as... You, you asked and you shall receive. Yeah, we got a bit of a stack going on in the middle there. Refresh and Hooksy. Now, they are in no man's land. One of the keys here is Refresh could tuck into that wall in case any utility does come on but through. Turning but turning that it. corner would be quite the intimidating. 
appearance. And so would going B, because that's four players essentially over towards that side of the map. There's two players already rooted in on the site, and then two were in quick rotation through middle. But it's over towards A, where Fnatic are starting their late ascent. Late smoke towards this scaffolding position, just to make sure they can clear with ease, only giving them one angle to worry about. And a bit of a flubbed molly there from Mad Lions. So they're looking for retake utility right now. They're harassing and they're pushing. Roy's getting stuck in. And it works so well. Oh, wow. Triple kill exchange for one. Mad Lions winning that considerably. We need to check that one out. I, I haven't seen teams have that clean of a retake towards the A ramp at all. That looks so easy. That was the Fnatic setup. Just completely nullified by Mad Lions. And that's Roy getting another kill. Ever since he's charged down the ramp, it's really been sunshine and rainbows for Roy. We're about to jump into Skybox just to take a look at some of that utility that was dumped on the ramp. So I'm just going to go back a few seconds here. So you can see they've already clearing towards Sandbag. And now there's four players on A throwing utility. We're getting a Molotov here on Scaff. We're getting flashes, we're getting nades. And look at the push. Three players all ready to peek and Acor even coming with the AWP. So this was an all-in mid-round maneuver. We stood and started that round with four players towards the B and middle side of the map. Right. Mad Lions changed it up. They took the fight and that's a massive one to win. I love to see that type of initiative mid-round. Flip flopping. More than a summer holiday in South France. They keep it. Ooh, Roland gives it all she's got. Catching Hooksy just over the edge of the smoke. You don't see the smoke icon. I assume he had visibility. Yeah, using it as a bit of a one way there. So getting punished and Hooksy only with an MP9. Maybe he was expecting an eco. Hi. Hi. Not the second. Golden does stop Refresh from demanding all of the control of B. Now Shush does have to step up. An interesting smoke that he plans to exploit. It's good. It's a cap, but it's a frag. It could be two. Crims goes down as well. Mad Lions are catapulting themselves into the lead here on Vertigo. Bomb needs to go down. They've got so much time. Golden's going to take and use as much as he can. Bomb slowly and quietly being retrieved. Now, he sets himself up on B, and he's, you can see it's deliberate that he's hidden. He's hoping that someone takes a slightly lack, uh, lackadaisical info peak towards B, but Roy's very hesitant. He knows they've given up B. They'll be playing for the retake, so Brolin allowed to walk on in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The timing couldn't be worse. He spotted Shush. Golden spotted as well. Mad Lions are popping off. Brolin can't even control the spray on Roy. He gets himself another frag. And that's 13 for Mad Lions. This is getting a little bit alarming for Fnatic fans around the world. Considering how this one started. Yeah. This looks like a completely different game. And that's what I was saying. If you give Mad Lions a chance to get back in, they only picked up five rounds in the first half, but that's more than enough for their individuals. They've come into the second half with confidence and they're running away with it. The pistol round nukes, the aggressive bonus round plays, the mid round re-aggression over towards the ramp. They are looking well drilled on their map choice. And I shouldn't be surprised saying by. that. Look at this. They've gone just SMG's armor. This is quick then. It will be. MAC-10's bombing it and already drawing blood. Hooksy, a little red face, hot under the collar. They're swinging in. It should be a lot of pressure and it definitely feels like that in the feed. It's brown on blue, looking to sweep the rest under the rug. is refreshing. He's hit some great shots to do so. Brolin's on the site. Super low. He's about to get dunked by refresh. He hasn't quite calculated that one. I think he went in the middle throw and <laughs> managed to go a little bit too far, a bit too much top spin. Here we go. JW's in a position to totally turn the round on its head, but it definitely was controlled by Refresh. After some great openings from the Swedes, they are once again overcoming a disadvantage. Refresh, he's in a predictable spot, has been spotted, and JW's going to use that information. He knows the CT's likely going to plant their feet after being spotted. Refresh has completely moved. He's actually walking up short now. JW's got his knife out. He may not be anticipating this. Refresh tucked in on elevator. Bomb on the site. It's an AWP fight, though. And that's Shush's every day of the week. Double for him. And speaking of double, it's double trouble on the AWP as well. Recovered. 
the refresh. This frag onto Crims very well could have determined the round. Handy stuff there from Refresh. He has been very, very essential to this CT side. I think his disruptive play through middle in the earlier round where he took down yeah. Crims and then continued to barrel forward throws a wrench in the normal Mad Lions playbook. It's like, okay, well, if they're going to come with this level, we're Fnatic. We're the ones meant to be going for those right. type of and crazy then plays. The, the Fnatic Lurk Smoke Middle, which was proceeded to be walked around and double killed, profited. So. Definitely not all good. Oh, that's scary. Finished off by Brolin. He punishes out on the Tracer Fire, puts some bullets into his teammate Golden, and he's so high alert. Acor could be caught on the way back. A chance for Brolin. He's got the molly. Acor knows it's going to get a little hot and bothered there. Four versus four, though. Are they taking any space anywhere across the map? It doesn't look to be the case. So Mad Lions now are just... Oh, I say that, of course. Here we go. Refresh. This is the same aggressive play that he went for a few rounds earlier. And Flusher seems to be aware. This could come down to timing. He's opting to go the long way around. And you can see here, they're going to pass each other in the night. And that could be a real problem if Flusher comes in to flank this A bomb site. They can take their time. Shush has no idea that this is possible either. A drop of a gun, it's not going to be heard. Right. Refresh is calling out towards B being clear. But wait, Flush is going back. Refresh is absolutely nailed this by accident. Hi, Flusher. All of that hard work, and it's just an AK delivery at the end of it. So they're coming up short. Three of them. All of them. And as the smoke goes down, Acor retreats. It doesn't look like they'll be able to contest. I say that. The spray from Hooksy, a wild one into the smoke, has got the necessary frag. Crims just about gets the bomb down. Some warning shots, but held by Acor. Mad Lions have completely and totally locked Vertigo down. If you've just joined us, Fnatic have not got a single T round here on Vertigo. Not a single one. This is great stuff from Mad Lions. We loved how organized they were just the other day versus Na'Vi on Nuke, and they're doing it again here on another map. Vertigo, their choice this time round. And while well, the game didn't start, looking very good for the Danes, but now it's turned around and... They are looking poised to take this one in very quick fashion. This confidence going forward into map number two, which will be Inferno, is going to be giving them a lot of hope to 2 this series here today. You can see that Brolin, he's the only one who's been able to make 20 kills. Everybody else from Fnatic stuck around that 10 mark. And just harassing over towards the forklift room will be the aforementioned Brolin, but he's on his own. He's on his lonesome. He's just kind of sell a bit of a fake here as the utility continues to harass. What can you do, Fnatic? You're about to get swung on. And that's refreshed. Oh, the flash Continuing work. to get more impact. It's insane. An assist for Hooksy on every single one. But Refresh just decides Virgo's over. He finishes it himself, finishes it by his own hand. There are two remaining. And Shush, admittedly squandering his first. Burning, but the flank is here, and Roy has finished it. 16 to 10, Mad Lions. Vertigo is their domain, and they show us exactly why. Fnatic don't post a single round on the attack.